hi sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim or sim naya and thank you all so much for all the love and support hope you all are doing great so there we'll be talking something very important about before we get into this video i am going to say that uh, they actually think that we are crazy because all the time when we talk about some certain things going on in black community the medical appetite and so many things going on the racism in medical like you know in medical and all that they think we're crazy but this Jewish doctor actually came out to say that uh, if you do not align with his values or if you are like, you know, not a Zionist or something that he is going to botch you. Like if you come for a surgery in his own hospital, you probably ain't going to make it, you know. And when we talk about some certain things, they think we are the crazy ones that we don't know what we're saying. They tell us to stop talking about it. When you stop talking about it, uh, you're going to go away. But it's not going away. I have a lot of black people been saying this for years, and a lot of people do not believe it. I am, but I am okay. I like I am fine that some people are already started seeing what we've been talking about when it comes to medical right to the season that is going on all over and all of that. But you know what? I don't think. I am kind of surprised that this man is still practicing because if someone like this can come up to say something like this, I think his license should be taken away from him because nobody is safe with him. Let's get into this video. I don't want a patient who doesn't align with my values because in general, it's a relationship. And if you're going to align, and it's not going to be a good outcome. It, no matter how good my surgery is, yeah. it, it may not, it's just not gonna work. Let me keep it all the way funky with you. When I go to the doctor, whether it's a dentist, optometrist, or I'm getting bladder surgery, I'm requesting or seeking out a black healthcare provider. And that's just what it is, what it has been, and what it's always gonna be. I could spend hours unpacking how this surgeon just said, if you aren't a Zionist, the results of your surgery by my hands are TBD. I've heard people call black people dramatic for being afraid, weary, skeptical of doctors, hospitals, surgeons, the healthcare system as a whole. But I guarantee you there are thousands more like him. I don't want a patient who doesn't align with my values because I wanted to come into this. I used to be a healthcare worker. I was licensed, but I retire. And from listening to that stitch and even the commentator that was saying that he stick by his own people and do not want to deal with people like him because he knows there's a million of them. I'm going to tell you a story and please pay attention to it. When I used to work at this institution, it was predominantly urban, okay, talking about the clientele, the patients that were coming in there. And I remember this incident, and that kind of turned my face on dealing with people like that particular doctor or any doctor that is not my own, okay? Some of them are very racist, people that's like that doctor. The new and the old generation of those type of doctors. They always want to be in that field, but they don't know how to deal with the general public, and that's including minorities. I remember one time, it was an emergency, and we had to go into the OR. I had to do a procedure with that same doctor, but he was a resident at the time. The attendant was coming in, and the attendant was just as worse than them because he used to allow them to say anything they want to do and whatever. So we was in a group of nurses. There was a small amount of them that were Filipino and there was a small and there was a large group of people that was black, but it was mostly West Indian. And I think I was the only black American there, but come from West Indian descendant. A patient came in as a stat patient. It was a gunshot victim. And it was a young child. And apparently what we, what we heard from the story, instead of the doctor finding out exactly what happened, he comes out with his colleague 
right in front of the child who was under anesthesia. And he said, I don't understand why we're going to sit there and stitch him back up, but he's going to go on the street and sell um, the product again. And he said it so loud in front of everybody and the resident was standing there. Excuse me, the attendant was standing there and he did not correct him. I felt so sorry for that child because I want to know if he's going to really operate on this child properly. Okay. Then he said, oh, they never have insurance. He was referring us as black people never had insurance. And he was, he was from that group. Okay. They're the first to say that we're anti-Semitic, but they're racist as hell. So when I heard everything that he said, and it was a whole bunch of us, the rest of the group kind of just like didn't really say anything they just looked upon each other the us in a collective we wrote him up we wrote all of them up when it went to central they didn't do anything about it we took it to the higher up and because it's been ongoing another time there was a lady elderly lady she was going for a procedure and it looked like she was new to the country, so she didn't understand English. And every time when I used to look in the computer and see whatever they needed to do for the client, they always say alter status, alter, they always say alter um, status, meaning that the person has a mental problem. And I noticed they were doing that to a lot of minorities, that same group. So one day I asked the doctor, what is the sense of you coming to a level one trauma hospital that's minority and it's a city owned and you're seeing people that look like us. Some of them come from different culture, but you guys are always saying something illiterate and saying something ignorant that you don't have no type of filter. So I said, there's a something that called do no harm. He got mad and he wrote me up and I wrote him up because I what he said. And then also he wrote up the lady and trying to say that she's crazy. I said, the lady's not crazy. She doesn't understand English. I say English is our second language. Just like you have a second language. Anyway, back to the story. That young man was shot because he was coming from the South. And he was graduating from college. And he went to see his grandmother. And it was a holiday. So he was at the front porch. And apparently bullets were shooting all over the place. Because they had a street, you know, they had like a street for um, party, a block party. And it landed him, and it nearly he nearly he nearly died. But luckily, he reached to the hospital as a destination, and as he did, they were able enough to recover him. So when they started to check his background, and found out he was a straight A student, and it was his freshman year in college, and how he had straight A's, and he was studying to become a doctor. Yeah, all of a sudden they kept their mouth shut. Because we, I took them all the way to the hearing. I did not care. And I said to them, you mustn't do no harm. And every time when they saw me, they, ne they always looked at me and never said anything. But when their people come to the, to the hospital, half of the time, they don't even pay the hospital bill. And we have to give them the, the same treatment. And I believe in treating all patients when I used to be a civil servant in the health field. I'm now retired. I retired, I retired a long time ago, but I used to see how the way they used to be offensive every time when they were around people like our color. And I wanted to know why they became doctors. Even when they do dentistry too, they have a, they have a tendency of overcharging people, especially when they don't have a co-payment. I have interacted with multiple of them. So I said to myself, are you here to deal with patients? For the general pop or you just there to make money and when they make a mistake they want you to take you have their back i never okay because I, I believe that patients come first okay because they are the ones if you are a nurse you have to be 10 toes standing before them because they used to lie on nurses and lie on texts especially when they want to cover up themselves and this is not a hate thing this is not anti-bullying this is not if you come in the hospital environment and you see how some of them treat patients, especially if you go to a certain hospital that's in Long Island, they look at you sideways. They want to know what you're here for. Like, oh, you're there to visit them. And they take forever to diagnose you. 
Okay? That's why a lot of people are skeptical of being around in the hospital because of them. Because they are, some of them are very racist. From my personal experience, they're very racist. And it's a lesson to learn. Because you hear how the way he was talking on that podcast, because there's a lot of them like that. And I'm glad that this gentleman had brought that topic up. I've been meaning to tell that topic up many, many times. When you work with them, they think that you're supposed to be their secretary. And they like to downgrade you. Yes. And they're very rude. But they always come into the urban place to do their practice. Okay? But when you go to their sites, they don't want to, t they don't want to tend to you. They only want to tend to their own. I find some of them to be the most racist people ever, but they're the first ones that will come and say, no, you're racist and you're anti this. But you see how the way they act in the hospital, especially in the urban hospital and even hospitals that's affiliated with them. This is all I got from this and I am still in shock because these people are very, very like, you know, some people are going nuts. Did he really say this out loud? And uh, and why is he still practicing? Because I don't see how this kind of person is still practicing. And his license has not been... Like, why does he still have a license? Why is he practicing? Someone that went online, like went on podcast to say this. Now, this is one of the reasons why when black people talk about the health care and uh, they are uh, the red to the season going on in healthcare system, they call us crazy. They think we just want to talk. They say we like to talk. They say we make things up. They say we're still living in the past. They say, why do we not? We should just let it go. That we won't stop talking about it. It is going to go away. But trust me, all these are not going to go away. Not until we still need to create awareness. Because while we're creating awareness, someone is out there saying that if you do not believe, in, you're not a Zionist, and all, he's going to botch you like he's going to do it. And then they are very quick to call us something uh, that we are anti-Semitic when you are seeing them plan, like, plan up being ready to assist towards us. Are they really okay? Let me start with this. A lot, I see a lot of things, uh, medical appetite and all that, uh, black people going through it and all that. And the one is that they are very, very quick to say some, some certain things about people that look like me without even being sure. How do you want to lie? And like, you know, how do you want to say, okay, now the young man, the sister talked about, like he got a bullet and it was pupilled and taken to hospital. And then he was like, how am I supposed to stitch it up when you are supposed to go back to the street? I am really, really confused how somebody said that. But the worst part is all these people are the people that they will say this and you probably try to take it up. And you find that nothing is ever being done about it. Because if something is being done about this, trust me, a doctor, a practicing doctor cannot have the guts or like, you know, the courage to step out probably on podcast where this video is going to spread around and say that uh, if you are not for the Jews and all that, I am going to mess you up if you come for surgery. People like this should be avoided by all means. People like this, his uh, license should be taken away from him. He is not fit to be doctor. And now let's talk about this. I see a lot of like, you know, I have seen so many, you know, not like somebody told me or or I am trying to make it up. Or I do not manufacture. Most of the things you see here are not manufactured. There are the things happening. There are the things going on all over the world. People talking about it and all that. So I do not manufacture anything. So all these are the things going on all over. I see black people probably going to dentists, going to hospital, probably having pains and all that. And they are not given painkiller. Because it's already been said that we do not feel pain. So for that reason, we are not entitled to some certain things. And then they are calling somebody crazy when they are the real crazy people. Right? 
but because of it, because I see a lot of them when you speak, uh, when you do not understand English, I mean, the way they go around it saying that you are in America and you are supposed to speak English, stop speaking Spanish, stop, stop speaking this. Guys, you all can do better. I am sure that if you travel to some countries, like, you know, you may not survive it because you always want everything to be like, you know, if it's not English, it's nothing. So every other people should just vanish in the surface of earth because they do not speak your own language, right? Really, there are some things you see and you are really very, very much confused and how all these are happening and like, you know, nothing is being done because... I do not see, I remember a video that went around about a palm color doctor coming out to say that why is it that uh, black people when they come to the hospital and all that, they come in alone, but they are never alone. I mean, they have somebody on camera and all that watching, they are talking to and all that because if people trust you, think they will be doing all this, but because they have had so many experiences of medical apathy and all that, you see them being careful. I remember the one that I oh, I was crying the day I saw this. Young man took his grandmother to hospital and plain told them, do not give her this because she reacts to it. And this young man stepped out for a minute, came back. They, I mean, I don't know how to say it, but the reality is that this thing was stated in her medical report that this should not be given to her, right? And the young man came back like a few minutes back to the ward where her grandmother was to find out that they gave her grandmother the same medications he told them not to give her. The young man was crying, calling them, telling them what, and they were acting like nothing happened. That was the worst Part. You know how people are going to humiliate you and then make you feel like you are the problem. The young man was looking at the grandmother gradually passing away. He was really very mad. He said, I am not sure my grandma. And the, worst, the, the, the funniest part is that they were saying that uh, they did not know. And he was like, did you not see that in the report? Because how are you? A, how how is it that a uh, like in a document is transferred to you for another patient? Firstly, the first thing you do is go through the person's medical history and where the person stopped to continue from that person. But they did not do that. That was how that black woman died. She actually eventually passed. So what am I saying? We have really watched them do so many things to people that look like me and think it's cool think it's okay but this one is actually out there like you know brought their light telling everybody that if you are not for me and you come for surgery in my hospital i'ma do you something you know what see you all in my next video bye for now